Hi, I'm Vicki from Nata Hollow Farm. Uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, discuss with you um, what you're going to do with your native bee house once you, after you purchase it. Um, so this has been here for uh, a year, basically. What you want to do is um, mount your bee house um, minimum three feet off the ground. Um, this one is a, a little bit taller, probably more like five. Um, east facing, so it gets the, the morning sun, first thing in the morning, that helps to um, warm up the bees, the mama bees muscles, her flight muscles, um, so she can go out and gather um, pollen and nectar. Um, this one is actually pretty open. You can actually, you can put it in a more protected spot, but you don't want it in a spot that's um, totally covered because uh, they have to be able to locate it from up above. Uh, so we're going to, I had unscrewed this pr previously, so we're just going to take this off and I'm going to show you uh, what you can do with this um, after it's full. So you can paint your house, by the way, your bee house. Um, blues, purples, um, black actually um, are, it's, science has shown that bees are attracted to those colors. Uh, they see them in a different way uh, actually than we do because um, they can see ultraviolet light. Um, so just make sure though that you use non-toxic paint. So I'd like to talk about uh, why we came up with this particular design. These um, stems are made out of Phragmites, uh, which is an invasive plant and it's good to get, it's a good use for it. Um, so these, this bundle is totally replaceable uh, every year and why that's a good thing is that um, native bees, honeybees, um, they, they are um, subject to um, predation by mites. They're subject to fungal um, diseases. So it's possible that um, there are mites in these little tubes um, or a type of fungus. So you don't want the new bees um, this season nesting, choosing these tubes to, to nest this year's eggs because, um, you know, there could be issues. So basically we're going to replace these, put in fresh stems and, you know, they're off to the races. Um, so these, you know, you might see commercial bee nests in, in other stores and whatever. Um, two things I want to mention about that. Uh, they should, these tubes should be eight inches in length. That is because um, the mama bee um, lays female eggs first in the back. Um, so she collects pollen and nectar, some saliva, uh, she makes a little blob of a substance called bee bread. She lays a little, she deposits a um, little blob of bee bread, lays an egg, and then she puts up a little cell partition, and then another blob of bee bread, and then another egg. So when the larvae hatch, they can start munching on the, the bee bread right, right away. Uh, but yes, females first in the back, males in the front. Uh, females take slightly more time to mature. Uh, than the males. So the males exit first and unfortunately the males are somewhat expendable because um, they're at the front. Um, so if the tube is not the correct length, the ratio between male and female eggs uh, won't be won't be correct. That that the female bee can the mama bee can choose the sex of the egg that she's laying. So uh, that's that's kind of if there isn't the right ratio of male to female um, eggs, then it, it kind of throws off the, the population. Uh, the other thing is the, the male eggs, they exit first in the spring, as I said, um, and they sometimes just kind of hang around waiting for the female bees to emerge and then they're, you know, they don't have to go looking for a mate any further. So, um, also, um, when you buy a commercial bee nest, uh, they don't really talk about emergence chambers, I would say, uh, in general. So because you don't want them, um, the new bees for this season, 
laying eggs in these stems. You want to take them out, but there still could be bees in here that haven't emerged yet. And different species emerge at different times. So you want to give them a nice dark place to just exit at their own time. So we're going to talk about uh, our little emergence chamber that we made. So I'm undoing these stems so I can get them out. Even though some of them look empty, uh, there might be, be some bees in there. Sometimes the mama bee, she doesn't finish laying her eggs right to the very end for whatever random reason. Sometimes she actually dies before she makes it to the end of the tube. So uh, to be on the safe side, I'm just going to put all these stems in the emergence chamber. very secure. <laughs> so you want to be gentle when you do this because you don't want to um, you know, knock them out prematurely. Okay. This guy, this guy's pretty heavy. I think that definitely has some in it. Okay, and I've already put some in here. This is our, so this is our emergence chamber. It's painted dark, uh, so it's, they like to have darkness inside. Um, so we're putting the stems in here, gently. There's a hole in the bottom. The exit hole, you just want one hole because you don't want other bees trying to get in there. This one is uh, filled. Nobody's come out yet. So in the uh, whoops, in the fall, if you if you have your nest block uh, still outside, there's there's a couple things you can do. Once it's once it's um, you know once it starts getting cold, you can put your nest in a dark unheated garage space. Or you can leave it outside, um, but um, you should put some protected mesh, protective mesh over the end, uh, just in case some, you know, a, a woodpecker or, or a, a bird with a, a pointy beak um, can't start pecking at them. So that's what you do with them over the winter. So this is a spot that I found that I think is great. It's just in the eaves. This is our little um, kiosk that we have at the farm. So I'm just going to climb up and put these guys under here and they can hang out until they're ready to come out. And I have a bungee cord just to secure it, just make sure it's not going anywhere. And then their their emergence hole is right here, so it's not blocked or anything. So yeah, they're just gonna hang out here until they're ready to come out. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs>